Huh. Watching Kyle's unboxing videos again? Yeah, he always finds the coolest... No way! A robot dog? Gotta ask where he got it. Or use your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Just draw a circle around the dog on your screen, and it shows you where to buy it right in the app. Oh, I just learned a new trick. And that for once, I beat Kyle to the next big thing. Circle it, find it, with the new Galaxy S24 Ultra, and circle the search with Google. Get yours now at Samsung.com. Internet connection required. Results may vary based on visuals. Survivor 46 is here, and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is and not uh, as simple you know, like, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Welcome back, Ram fans. This is Rams Up, your favorite LA Rams podcast. We are proud members of the Fans First Sports Network. That's fansfirstsports.com. You can also follow us on YouTube. Our channel is at LA Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. You'll hear from my co-host, Tom, on occasion as well. Hey, we're not Rams insiders. We're just longtime fans who love talking about our Los Angeles Rams. Let's get to it. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Mark from Rams up here, and we got Paul Wally back on board once again, talking draft. What's going on, Paul? I'm excited. I'm excited. The draft is around the corner. Got my list of the day three dudes, Power Picks Part 2. Shout out to Puka Nakua, number 17. Yeah, if you missed it, we did a, a, a Puka Powers Puka Power Picks Part 1 uh, that was several weeks ago. And what we're talking about here is is draft picks, prospects that are going to slip in, in the draft, potentially, very likely, that uh, deserve some recognition, deserve some consideration for our Los Angeles Rams uh, later in the draft, day three. So Paul is calling this one, well, it's Book of Power Picks Part 2, Day 3 Dudes. He's got two names for this episode, so... Uh, <laughs> Couldn't decide which one, so we're we're including both. And so you have a list of what do we got? Ten or eleven guys we're going to talk about? I got ten and an honorable mention. I just couldn't. I just had to shout the guy out. Yeah, and it, it's kind of funny. Um, and and we have the receipts for this. Some of these guys we're talking about uh, last time seem to be um, moving up in the draft on some other draft boards. It's kind of interesting. Now, I'm not saying anything. But uh, maybe everybody's reading this reading this the same way we are. Uh, but let's get started. We'll roll with the first guy and who we got. This is a guy you mentioned. I, did we did we talk about Bub Means a little bit a couple of weeks ago? The wide receiver out of Pitt. Yeah. So yeah, I did. I did mention him last time. I didn't get a chance to go too deep into it. But you know, this time around. So the first time we did, we had the criterion of. Uh, pick 100 or lower. I tried to really dig deep and say, you know, who are the guys that really, 
that no one is talking about. So this, you know, he did get a little bit of recognition. He got a shout out on ESPN and rightfully so. This kid is one of my favorites in the draft. He is just a beast of a wide receiver, played at Pitt. Uh, just to go over some of his highlights, played in all 12 games, started 10 in wide receiver, honorable mention, all ACC, 41 receptions, 721 yards, six touchdowns. A solid prospect. Mark, he ran a 4-4-3 in the 40 at the combine, 39 and a half inch vertical. He had the eighth best athletic score amongst receivers at the combine. Now, just think, Mark, that dynamic group of wide receivers that were there at the combine, he was number eight amongst them. He's 6'1", 210, 33-inch wingspan. You just watch his tape, and he will just jump off the screen at you. Wait, was, I, he, uh, was he invited to the senior ball? Is he a senior? Um, he was. I think he was at East West. East he West, okay. Side. But just phenomenal player. He was a transfer from Louisiana Tech. Um, spent two years at Pitt. And, you know, when I just look at him, he would just be perfect in the Rams wide receiver room. He would be the perfect number four for the Rams. Um, I'm really excited for him. And another thing I really tried to do, I tried to earmark players that were legitimate shots of being drafted by the Rams. So we're looking at guys that are definitely going to be day three, probably on the lower end, really being overlooked legitimately could wind up with the Rams. I think he would be a fantastic fit in horns. So you're telling me he can block. He can block. He is physical as they come. That's the first thing you will notice when you watch him on tape. He's a physical receiver. Needs, you know, needs to develop his route running, needs to develop the hands, but a yak machine never goes down on first contact. Loves to go over the middle. Uh, physical blocker, everything checks all the boxes for the Rams wide receiver room. Yeah, I'm wondering if, you know, the Rams uh, obviously don't put a lot of weight on the combine. So it's another one of those cases where maybe he was on their radar and now the combine elevates him a little bit more for some yeah. other teams, you know. So sometimes it, it's kind of a double-edged sword, the combine stuff. If there's a player you love, for the Rams, you almost, we talked about this once before, right? You almost hope they suck at the combine, but <laughs> hey, it is what it is. Yeah, he's, um, one that lit, he's one that lit it up. And remember when we did our mock, we lost him because we were expecting him to be like seven, six, and he went around five. So yeah. he's flying off the boards. Yeah, I have some old rankings from, uh, I think it's from the um, Draft Tech. And he his I forget what the ranking was, but I don't think he was getting drafted. This is from a couple months yep. ago. Two forty three. They had him at two forty. Oh, wow. Yeah, crazy. You want to move on to the next guy? Absolutely. Look, one of my what? favorite players in this draft. You know how I feel about the SEC, and you know how I feel about LSU and defense. Makai Wingo, defensive tackle from LSU, uh, six feet two eighty five. Mark, he ran a 4.85 at the 40. A 4.85 at that size. 25 reps on the bench. 25 reps on the bench. And remember our part one Puka power pick, Jordan Jefferson. He led all I the was, bench tackles. I was going to bring him up, yeah. The reps on the bench are one of my favorite, favorite activities at the combine. I use them all the time. I think it's one of the best predictors of guys that are going to do well in the NFL. He was number seven among all defensive tackles in, ter in terms of the total score at the combine. Let me just read off his uh, list of accomplishments. No, uh, 2023, permanent team captain. 2023, SEC community service team. 22, third team All-American. 22, second team All-SEC. 22, SEC defensive lineman of the week against Ole Miss. 21, SEC all freshmen, all SEC. What does that tell you? Look at that consistency, just the size. And what's great about him, not only does he play the run well, he, he knows how to get skinny and rush the passer. Something that I thought was really, really impressive. But I just love He's just a consistent, all-out, all-motor kid with a ton of talent. 
and he's just going to respond really well to NFL coaching. And I just read off his accolades. So he's got that character element, that that work ethic component, everything that makes you a Puka power pick. He is definitely a day three dude, and I have a feeling he's going to wind up with the Los Angeles Rams. Who goes first, Jefferson or Wingo? Ah. Well, you know what? I think Wingo, because Wingo's got more pass rush potential. But I think Jefferson, we already named him. Jefferson is going to be an unsung hero and whatever team he winds up in. He's going to be one of those guys that just rolls up his sleeves and does all the dirty work. Was Jefferson the one that uh, just killed it in the weight room? Yep, that was him. Yeah. See, I remember this stuff. <laughs> I'm learning so much. This is. Oh, a... By the way, let me let me let me say this about Makai Wingo. So at LSU, as you know, they have the honor of wearing number eighteen. Eighteen means you represent all that is to be an LSU Tiger. Guess who wore number 18 this year? You know, I just saw that because I did a player focus on him, uh, our new uh, Tr- Tredavious White, correct? Right. Yeah. He also wore it. You're absolutely right. And, you know, go off on a tangent here. I was looking through, I did my player focus on Tredavious White, and the thing I did not include, he was involved in that hilarious play last year, uh, might have might have been two years ago, where... Um, the opposition's uh, offensive plays were blown across the field. Oh, and, the, uh, yes. And, and he ran off and gathered them, and the refs were chasing him, trying to retrieve them. It was pretty funny. I, By um, the way, that was a great signing by the Rams. If that kid stays healthy, the Rams just got a bargain. Yeah, yeah. we're going to do an episode. I think our next roundtable, we got to hash out what this secondary is really going to look like. And I talked about it uh, in the last episode. I took my hack at it, but I think you and Ian uh, probably have a better take on it than I do. Well, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you hit some high points. I'm confident. And by the yeah. way, Nation, we got mock draft number 10, our final mock draft before uh, the actual NFL draft. And Mark and I, and uh, I get a chance to show off what I think is going to be the best sort of, I guess, plan of attack, if you want to say, Mark, for the Rams going into the draft. Oh, we'll have more than that. We got plenty of time. We got, we got a, how many, how long till the draft? Is it four or five weeks? Yeah, go for it. All right. We'll we'll get a a couple of more. You're right. Yeah, we'll get a few more in. And I I still want to have a couple other guys on it to let them have a shot. And Hey, I've been, I've asked people, especially the the folks that are critical of our draft. Hey, come on down. Um, yeah. Hey, let you run a draft. And I know it's hard. A lot of these guys, they, 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 uh, and I get it. It's easy to, you know, throw darts at someone else's draft. And most of these guys, I suspect just like me, you know, and like Ian has said, uh, he, he can, he can probably do pretty solid through three rounds. You get into the fourth, fifth, sixth round. Uh, I think that's what a lot of, uh, viewers shy away from uh so it's it's much easier to criticize seventh round picks than it is to actually make them you know uh, <laughs> and that's why we have segments like this to, to right. show off those seventh round sixth round fifth round picks that really wind up being just play far yeah. far beyond their yeah. draft uh, and, and i and i still say there's no such thing as a bad seventh round draft pick that's just how i feel about it that's win win all the way around yeah although i did see again going off on another tangent i think it was espn ran a draft and they had the last two picks for the rams taking a punter and then a kicker that's and, right yes that I, I i get the kicker i i get the kicker but i did not get the punter but oh well let's move on to the next guy shall we who do we got uh and we've talked about Tanner Bartolini, the center out of Wisconsin, a little bit. Somewhere along the line, he popped up. At one of our mock drafts, I took him, uh, I think it was in round five. Incredible value. So Tanner Bartolini, when it comes to the Rams offensive line, University of Wisconsin, I mean, come on. It's like that's our feeder team right there. So Tanner Bartolini from the University of Wisconsin, 6'4", 303. Mark, I got a question for you. What player had the highest athleticism score among all centers at the combine? This year's combine was it Bartolini? Was Bartolini? Wow. He ran a four nine four forty, threw up twenty one reps on the combine, and here's the best part. Are you ready for this? He had the fastest 
three cone time ever for a center at the combine. That's crazy. And he's not a not necessarily a small center either. Not at all. He broke Jason Kelsey's record. Oh wow. And so why is he not uh a day one or well day two anyways? Why isn't he a day two pick? It gets even better, and that's it's, a good question. I, I think it's interior offensive line, that's probably why if I answer not a glory, question. not a glory position, easy to right. overlook unless you want to win a championship, right? So Let's take a look at what else. It gets even better, Mark. Take a look at this. He played four of the five OL positions uh, for Wisconsin, which just shows you his uh, incredible flexibility position-wise. Nineteen Over 1,900 snaps during his time at Wisconsin. His kids played a lot of football, no? The way they describe him, they t- uh, the coaches, all about leadership and team-first mentality. And you know what I love? I love the scholar athletes, academic All Big Ten 2023, honorable mention All Big Ten 2022, academic All Big Ten 2022, 2021, academic All Big Ten. What do you think about that? Well, well, here's a question for you, though. Now, Logan Bress, well, we'll start with the beginning. Start from the beginning. Uh, Rob Havenstein, David Edwards, Logan Bress. Uh, well, you know, Edwards was decent. havenstein has been very yeah, good. Um, Logan Brass, not so much. But I thought Logan Brass was attractive to the Rams because he thrived in the zone blocking scheme, which I thought was Wisconsin's thing. Is that not the case anymore or not the case with Bartolini? Can he thrive in the Rams, you know, modified rushing attack? Well, I, I knew you were going to ask me that. So so let's take a look at Bartolini. Bartolini, uh, University of Wisconsin, this year, set the for, for the University of Wisconsin, they set all sorts of records for their passing offense for a team that's known for their power running scheme, correct? Right. So they led the Big Ten in third down uh, conversion rate this year. So they set school records and attempts, completions, second fewest in, uh, interceptions in program history. He posted an 80.3 pass blocking grade via PF. That's the highest for any Badger and the seventh highest in all of Big Ten. So that's what I looked at. I wanted to see could he fit our system so we know he could pass block. When you watch him play, not only can this kid get downfield, he he would be great in in that power zone scheme. He would be great on the stretch plays. He can do it any way you want it. This kid can play football. Um, there was one play where I'm watching him. He had blocked the guy. The running back was well past the defensive player. Bartolini just threw him down and pancaked him anyway. So that's that that edge that he brings to the O-line. But he can mix it up any way you like in the power scheme, in that zone stretch scheme. Um, he definitely has the potential. We saw the athleticism score, right? Think about it. He's got it all. This kid is a complete package. I think for the Rams, he'd be a great value pick. Backup, backup Avila at center. Uh, I w- I could see this kid playing guard. Just unbelievable potential and keep that Wisconsin Badger uh, feeder system going. I just I just love the way this kid plays football. Yeah, I, I think we do need to add some depth. Um, just unsure of what we have at, after Note Boom, our sixth man. Um, there are some other guys that can play. Ankrum's moved on. Um, yeah, we, I, I could definitely see us adding an interior offensive lineman late in the draft. I think that's going to happen for sure. Pen, pencil this kid in at center, left guard, right guard. He can do it all. Perfect. Okay, let's move on to the linebacker out of Notre Dame. Is it Maurice Leafau? Maurice Leafau. Leafau. Rangy kid, kid from Hawaii by way of Notre Dame. You got to love it. I love the way this kid plays football. Kid plays with fire and intensity. He no- also knows how to drop into coverage mark. So that linebacker that plays next to EJ53 has a lot of coverage duties. He has to be able to blitz. He has to be able to play the run. He has to be able to cover uh, running backs. He has to be able to uh, cover t- jack tight ends. He can do it all. He had a ridiculous 40 time, 464 at the combine. With the size of 6'2", 238. So he can jack tight ends on the line. He can drop into coverage. 
this kid knows how to play fo- football. He played every linebacker spot for Notre Dame. He was even used to rush the passer when he got a chance to rush the passer. 25 pressures and three sacks in only 129 pass rush reps. Gave up very little in coverage, Mark. He was targeted 11 times, gave up only 62 yards. 34-inch wingspan with the on 34-inch arms. So can, t- can you take a look at that wingspan? He needs some solid coaching. The one thing I will say, he needs to channel that aggression, gets out of position. But once he does that, he's going to be the perfect complement on the inside. At Notre Dame, he played in 12 games, 12 starts at linebacker senior year, 44 tackles, 23 solo, 6 TFL, 3 sacks, pair pass breakup, 2 quarterback hurries, forced a fumble and recovered another. Right? Nice production. Not bad for and and kid that they're projecting to be available in round six. Jump all over this kid. He's going to fit in perfectly and be a gate a great contributor. Whether it's on special teams, but I definitely see this kid being an instant contributor for the Rams. Yeah, if there's a position where I think we're a little thin, I, Ernest Jones is awesome. After that, I mean Roseboom gets it done. But there not a lot after that, not a lot to get excited about. We got your guy from Rutgers, who knows about him, Jake Hummel. Yeah. So yeah, a linebacker late in the draft is is almost a, a done deal. Unless they, you know, package a bunch of picks and, and move up to grab somebody or, or trade some picks for a uh, Hassan Reddick or someone like that. Uh yeah, linebacker's gonna be on the menu for sure. And you know what I've noticed in this year's draft? I mean, it's still early, obviously. And, you know, a lot of this is just based on projections. But there's a lot of athleticism at linebacker that's not really getting talked about. A lot of these players that are just – they just, you know, they they run well. They're athletic. They, they have that change of direction, uh, that ability to be explosive. Uh, in the later rounds, which I think is really interesting, you're not just getting these – like, remember the old days – you get those plotter, you know, middle linebackers in the yeah. lower rounds. Now you're getting tremendous yeah. value in terms of athleticism. So yeah, a, a guy like Micah Kaiser comes to mind, someone like that. Who, yeah, remember that? Yeah, and, and he was a good player, but yeah, he he had those limitations. Absolutely, yeah. I remember they were and they were hoping they gave him 59. I think, if I'm not mistaken, they were hoping he would be a London Fletcher type. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he might have had a, a much more prosperous career, but he had that bad injury, and I think it was year two or three. Someone yeah, on a, a someone on his one of his teammates took him out, if I remember correctly, from behind, came up and hit him in the back of the knee, and it it was not it was not pretty. Okay, let's move on to a running back you want to talk about. One of my favorite running backs, an absolute sledgehammer. So the one one reason I want to talk about this kid is Kendall Milton. I just think he is a running back. He is one of those classic workhorse running backs. I know people throw around that term, but watch this kid play, and it's a matter of just give him the ball, and he just goes north south. He's got enough wiggle to make people miss. Six foot one, Mark two twenty five, four six two forty, nineteen reps on the bench. He's just a downhill runner. Just give him the rock. What I like about him when I watch him on film, this kid does not go down on first contact. It takes a gang of tacklers to bring him down. He's going to be great in the red zone, short yardage beast. But the way I I see him, and he would be a great complement to Iron Kyron, when the Rams are in the lead and they want to drain the clock, give this kid the ball, and he will move the chains. And he will beat up on that defense. Um, doesn't really have a great sort of, uh, you know, uh, if you want to say history, catching the ball. Only a couple of catches in both seasons. But that's something you can learn. Uh, also needs to work on his blocking skills. Again, something else you can learn. I'm sure the Rams will, uh, you know, sort of bring him up to speed. Excuse the pun. But as a rotational power back, Mark. There is not another back with a value that this kid will have for the Rams. Was there a uh, was he Georgia's number one quarter uh, running back? I should say. 
Well, technically, yeah, technically he was. They also had uh, what was his name? Uh, number thirty. Um, oh, darn, I forgot his name. Uh, the other running back that I like from Georgia is actually a more complete back in terms of catching out of the backfield. So, but you know his numbers: one hundred and twenty-one carries, seven hundred and ninety yards, six and a half yard average. Mark fourteen touchdowns. Fourteen touchdowns. Can you imagine that? Yeah, uh, and there have been some good ones come out of Georgia, huh? Uh, yeah, not, not yeah. bad at all. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, running back is a position where I, I think the Rams, I don't think they need to draft a running back, but uh, as, as I have made the argument, assuming if you're going to come out of here with 11 picks or whatever, uh, I think you should draft a running back every year. If you're going into a draft with seven picks and you're making seven picks, maybe not, but... Um, yeah, I would. I definitely add a running back if things go the way I think they're going to go, and the Rams come out of this with you know ten to twelve picks, something like that. And to expand upon that thought, you're spot on. Let me tell you why. Number one, it's a position that's completely undervalued now in the NFL, right? Because number for multiple reasons, right? The the high rate of injury, so teams are hesitant to invest long term contracts. You know, huge uh, huge. Uh, huge investments in terms of money. Uh, so you very rarely see that now with running backs for that reason. That means that there are a lot of running backs that are out there. Also, the the draft has been churning out these uh, high-impact, low-cost running backs. So to have one sort of coming into the mix every year, you're absolutely right, right? Keeps that room fresh, um, helps keep your, like, star players fresh. Iron Kyron, we saw him with the broken hand. So – I think you do need that those big sledgehammer backs that can absorb a lot of the punishment, particularly late in the game in those short yardage situations. Iron Kyron has proved that he is a beast in the red zone, but you don't want to run the player into the ground. Listen, the Rams have to learn a valuable lesson. Aaron Donald said he was burnt out, and look what they've done to Cooper Cup. All right, the Rams have to do a better job of keeping their star players fresh, rotating players in and allowing them to have longevity in the NFL. Yeah, I've always had an issue with that where, you know, teams, um, even when they have, you know, a 17-point lead in the fourth quarter, they don't run okay. their, their backups out there a little bit. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. And that is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is and, not uh, as simple you know, I, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many you know, more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. It's only a kick. A jump. A block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle, a run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. Hey there. Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. 
And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. So what do we got next? We have uh, a safety slash linebacker out of Miami. Yeah, one of, one of my favorite. I, I, I really feel he's a sleeper. I, I don't feel he's getting enough recognition. So he played safety at Miami. When he got to Miami, he was 6'4". They had – listen to this, Mark. They had him listed at 208. He's now 6'4", 231, 34-inch arms. He's a former safety. They now project him as linebacker. I mean, he would look great next to EJ53 as well. I mean, this kid is tough as nails. He's uber talented, only 21, scratching the the surface of his potential. Um, he can bring that dimension of toughness and, and pass coverage uh, to that William inside linebacker position. Uh, everything when I watch him, he's the best when he's in the box. He looks great when he's in the box. But his pass uh, coverage drops are going to be amazing because the kid's a former safety. It only makes sense. Um, in 2023, started all 12 games, ranked second on the team with 73 total tackles, 48 solo, one interception, two forced fumbles, five pass breakups, one fumble recovery, and he played his best against top-notch talent. Uh, they played Florida State twice. Twice, this kid had nine tackles. 18 oh. tackles, both in two games against Florida State. So he he's going to be a, a linebacker at the NFL level, though. Absolutely, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Uh, but it's more of like a hybrid position anyway. Think about it, yeah. right? We'll get into that uh, into that look. But the fact that he could just the way he plays, he's like a heat seeking missile. But it's just the skill set. The kid is talented. He has great ball skills. Um, you know, you can't just show up and play safety at the U, right? So he's got great ball skills. He's got great coverage. I could see this kid dropping down and facing up on a tight end. So I think he would give the Rams such incredible versatility and flexibility in that in that look. So I think he would be a great fit for the Rams. And like I said, you know, part two of our um, of this segment is really not just sleeper picks, but the guys who would fit in well, the dudes that would fit in well for the Rams. Yeah, uh, so it'd either be, in the ideal world, it'd either be uh, Leah Fow or Williams for the Rams. Not both of yeah. them, but one of them maybe. And both of them great fits. Yeah. Both of them would be great fits. Let's move on to the wide receiver out of Texas A&M. I'm going to let you handle that first name for the – the... yeah. So this, <laughs> this, this is one of my favorite players in the draft, and I was really disappointed. I'll tell you why. He showed up at the combine at the medical, and they found – a stress fracture in his shin. So he didn't get a chance to perform, but this kid is so tough. You know what he did? He said, well, the stress fracture is in my shin. Let me throw up the, uh, the bench. So that's the kind of player you right there. You want, that's the kind of player you want on your team. That's a Puka power pick right there. He's a wide receiver, tough as nails, five foot nine, one ninety. So he's rocked up. He's willing to go over the middle blocks like a fullback. That's the first thing the coaches, when they talk about him, they said a wide receiver, a slot wide receiver that when he goes in motion, loves to block. Um, like I said, he couldn't he couldn't run at the combine, but he threw up 21 reps on the benchmark, a wide receiver. Right? He's a former running back who runs like a running back. He's got great yak ability and exceptional return skills. Mark, with the new rule changes, now returners are uh, a priority again for the Rams, right? No more fair catches. Let's try to get some uh, sizzle into our return game. I think he's probably the best return man in college football right now for this oh. year. Yeah, absolutely. He was the first player in conference history to total over 2,000 receiving yards and 800 return, uh, punt return yards for his career. So that we're talking about a player that's got some real – uh, take it to the house ability. His numbers were suppressed a little bit in terms of as a receiver. He played with seven different quarterbacks. Oh, throughout. wow. Yeah. I mean, this kid is an absolute steal. So you take that unfortunate injury, you take um, 
you know, the size, people knock him for the size. They say he could only play in the slot. I disagree. I think this kid would be successful anywhere you put him, but he will be an absolute beast out of the slot, no question about it. Um, I think Aeneas Smith would be a great fit. What he brings in the return game, the toughness, checks all the boxes for the Rams. And I think he's just uh, he'll just explode when he gets a shot to be, you know, in that top three, uh, either, you know, wherever they put him in that uh, range of wide receivers for the Rams. Yeah, it'll be interesting what approach the Rams take with their special teams. I was actually surprised they were not one of the, there were three teams that voted against the the rule change regarding kickoffs. I thought the Rams would have made it fourth, given, given the, yeah. the situation with their special teams. But I guess Sean McVay wants to give it a go as far as special teams for the first time in a while. And uh, if that's the case, he needs to uh, needs to figure that out personnel wise, and maybe a guy like Smith would help. Absolutely, I, I think that's another thing. I think I think more so than ever now with the new rule changes, the return men are going to have an ex- incredible value. So if you look at the Rams wide receiver room, this kid is a natural fit. I got one more accolade to throw out at you for this kid. Ready? Thirty six game consecutive uh, thirty six game consecutive streak with a reception. Eighth longest active streak in the nation. Oh, wow. So some consistency there. Absolutely. Great steal at the bottom of the draft. Okay, let's talk about now Zach Zinter. I know a little bit about him. He had that unfortunate injury. Uh, I think it was in the Big Ten championship game, perhaps. Against Ohio State, yeah. Right. And didn't get to play in the uh, college football playoff. And that's got to hurt his, uh, probably hurting his uh, draft stock. So what do you got on Zach? So, and I'll just, wonderful segue, by the way. Thank you. So, yeah, apart from that injury, they um, the early projections, if you went on a lot of the draft sites, the early draft sites for this particular draft, they had him as a second round, third round grade. Think about that. And I think it did, in a way, uh, hurt Michigan a little, more than just a little, because in under, uh, for all you, uh, Big Blue fans out there, if you watch in clutch times, they ran behind this kid. They ran to the right side. Um, so to lose your top guard on the side, which is your dominant side, I think just you know speaks volumes in terms of not just how well the uh, Michigan running game uh, was flowing, but just how good this kid really is. He's six five, three twenty two. So wow. right there, those are, you know, come on. Those are those are tackle. Uh, measure measure ends there. I'm glad you said that. He is tall, long, and versatile. He's reliable. He's an experienced prospect. 45 games, started 42. Uh, all but one of those came at right guard. But they say he has the potential to play anywhere on the line. Um, they said the kid is nasty, high football IQ. Um, his injury recovery is on track. They reported the article came out yesterday. He should be ready for camp, Mark. He should be ready for camp. Let me read off his accolades. You ready? Go for Unanimous it. First team All-American 2023. Two-time academic All-American. Voted captain by his teammates 2023. Three-time academic All-Big Ten honoree 21, 22, and 23. Three-time All-Big Ten selection. All right. So this kid and he was honorable mentioned by his coaches uh, in 21. So when he first uh, got into the starting lineup. So this kid has not only been consistent, he has been dominant. So his injury, unfortunately, uh, has knocked him down. But listen, to the f- football pundits, they know this kid's name. He is going to be a steal in this draft, whoever takes him, wherever he goes. Uh, right now, the projections have him going as high as four, but mid five, some early six. But now that this report came out about his medical, we'll see, right? I'm sure they're going to poke and prod this kid to find out you know, if he's ready to go. But if he's ready to go by the time camp rolls around, he's going to be another absolute steal. The perfect Puka power pick, a road grader that you can get late in the draft. Yeah, and potentially a right tackle of the future. Would that be a stretch? I wouldn't put it past this kid. Yeah. 6'5", you know, that that's almost... Now, 
you're more of an X and O guys than I am. Would a would some quarterbacks be opposed to having a six five guard playing in front not of them? Not at all. No? Not at all. No, absolutely not. Actually, that length is what they look for at tackle. At well, guard, guard, right. Where, yeah. it, where it comes to play a guard, a lot of coaches, O-line coaches, I think we brought this up before, is that they say from the leverage standpoint, they would like the shorter, stouter guards. But nowadays in the modern NFL with pass blocking and the new schemes and the zones, that those combo schemes where nobody runs a true zone or a true power gap. So – um, they like to have those taller players, but they also like it for the versatility. When you yeah. have to fill in a tackle, it makes a big yeah. difference. Right. Okay, let's move on to – this may be our first small school guy. I, I guess Troy. Is Troy a small school? They're a, sco- they're a small so. school in my mind. <laughs> I think so. I, yeah. So tell us about Javon Solomon. All right. So Javon Solomon, he's another Puka power pick. I mean, this kid is, we talk about just shredded. 6'1", 245. He ran uh, a 4'7", 240, 23 reps on the bench. All right? 23 reps on the bench, dude. That's impressive. Kid plays with fire. Kid plays with heart. Uh, loves to run down plays from the backside. 2023 all Sun Belt first team. 2022 all Sun Belt third team. 2021 all Sun Belt first team. Um, this year, he was, like I said, was named to the first team. He led all of the FBS with 16 sacks, ranked ninth with 18 tackles for loss. He set the single season sack record and the Troy FBS sack record. Um, the most in the last two decades at Troy since OC Omenyora. That's a pretty impressive name for you New York Giant fans out there. Uh, he finished his career second all-time at the Sun Belt and Troy history with 33 career sacks. Um, forced two fumbles in Troy's Sun Belt championship game victory over Appalachian State. So the kid comes to play. Just look at all those accolades. This kid knows how to produce. Doesn't matter where. This kid, I think, would be a, a value pick as an edge rusher. Uh if you watch him play, he knows how to bend on the edge. He needs to develop some moves, but that's every player coming out of college that plays on the edge, to be honest with you. Um, the truly elite players are the ones that come out with two or three counter moves ready to go. So I think this kid would be a great developmental edge rusher who can play right away and can contribute. Okay. Um, he's. I think most of these guys, I have, they have bounced on one of our, they have showed up at one of our discussions, one of our drafts at one time or another, but not Javon Solomon. Uh, so that's a new one. And I'll keep him on our radar. I have draft tech showing him again. This is a couple months old. He was in the 200s. So he is a true sleeper. Yeah, he's probably much higher now. A lot of, a lot of people have picked up on him because he works out so well. He's yeah. so athletic. And, uh, oh, by the way, you know, the other guy we've talked about, um, is it Jalex, Jalex Hunt, is it? Jalex? The player you like, yeah. Yeah, um, and and I, he had a pro day at Houston Baptist, Houston Christian, whatever the school's called. I've heard it called a, a couple of different names. And there were teams, uh, there were scouts from like eight teams that showed up. And I saw him mocked to someone. I think it was the third or fourth round now. So he is soaring up the charts. The the mock drafts that are coming up, Ram Nation, are going to be really, really interesting because I spent some time looking at the first round. And the quarterbacks are so overvalued. The wide receivers are so overvalued. A lot of players are going to get pushed up. Mark, there is a good chance that players like Verse, uh, Byron Young, they're going to get pushed down to the point where the Rams might be able to stand pat and get the Byron, player. Byron, Byron right? Murphy, you mean? I'm sorry, Byron Murphy, yeah. Yeah, no. I make that mistake too, yeah. Yeah, I know, thinking back to the Byron Young, yeah. So Byron Murphy, Iron Byron, I think, um, obviously one of our favorite players, but there are going to be a lot of players. The Rams can even move back and still pick up the player that they covet. So this is going to be really interesting. The way this first round is playing, uh, and it happens every year, we know the, the the positions that get all the attention, quarterback and wide receiver. 
and they're going to push a lot of these uh, defensive players right to the Rams. Or a really nice sleeper-wide receiver in the first round that, that the Rams want can fall right into their lap. By the way, you were talking about uh, secondary moves off the edge. Uh, we're discussing Javon Solomon. And I went and looked at some film on a guy that you brought up recently. And, and a couple of people brought up on the YouTube channel, channel Jonah Ellis. And yeah. I didn't watch a whole lot, but man, he appears to have a, a, a pretty solid spin move from what I, I saw. They love his spin move. And who's his dad? Luther Ellis. Played yeah. In the NFL. yeah, I was well, who, really who impressed. Who better to learn from? Yeah, and and I don't know that you know it's necessarily an NFL ready spin move, but he was pulling it off. Um, I didn't see a lot of film on him, but you know there was a lot of spin moves, effective spin moves getting to the quarterback. He's he's a great pick, and you know we had him on here originally, and he just caught fire. And now they had his ADP is like, um, I think the last time I, when I just checked was like I think they had him at uh, 80, 82. So that's a differential of about 40, 45 positions from when we first had him, Mark. That's how, you know, with all these different showcases and combines, these players just take off like rockets, yeah. right? And they're on everybody's radar. But, you know, one reason why I like him and I like him, that profile players Are we like talking him, about a, Ellis or Solomon now? Ellis. Ellis. The one thing I like about Ellis and players like Ellis is that the kid has played a lot of football. The kid knows how to play football. So when you watch him on film, yeah, you can get caught up in some of these other things, but the kid just knows how to play football. When you watch the plays unfold, he knows where he's supposed to be. He instinctively goes to the right spots. The kid's got that football IQ. And, you know, that's something that's, that you can't quantify. You really have to watch and see it sort of unfold in front of you. He's a great prospect. Okay, we're going to move on to the last guy. You had a late ad. There's a tight end you wanted to talk about. Jared Wiley out of, uh, let me fix that that name there. Um, Wild E. Coyote. I already have his nickname. Jared Wiley. Uh, uh, Jared Wiley is a six foot six, 250 pound tight end. I had mentioned him in one of our mock, mock drafts. Um, he ran a four six two forty with a thirty seven inch vertical mark. That's just ridiculous, right? If you want a developmental tight end uh, on the cheap, this is the kid that you want. He's a big athletic tight end who has all the intangibles to be great. He can get physical at the top of the route, uh, which I really look at when I look at tight ends and wide receivers. I want them to be physical at the top of the route, just like Cooper Cup. That's his, you know, his sort of calling card. And he can mix it up when he needs to, blocking assignments and jump balls. Solid hands, need to polish up his great, his game. Uh, but he, like another player, just great leadership potential, great intangibles. Let me read off his career honors. 2023, first team, all Big 12. 2023, second team, Associated Press, all Big 12. 23, honorable mention, Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year, Mark. 23, first team academic, all Big 12. 23, Big 12 offensive player of the week against Baylor. Uh, 22, honorable mention, all Big 12. 22, first team academic, all Big 12. 21, first team academic, all Big 12. Right? He was the team captain in 23. Started all 12 games. Uh, team best 47 uh, receptions. Ranked fourth nationally for power five tight ends he topped tcu eight touchdown catches and he tied for the national league among players at his position so and did you share his uh I, I was just looking at his profile six seven yeah yeah well, I went by uh, the, comp the combine numbers they had him at six six two forty nine okay still that yeah that's a big that's tight impressive. end that's impressive higby yeah. right in a lot of ways yeah and Colby Parkinson-esque in a lot yeah. of ways. Yeah. So you think about getting a nice tight end who could, you know, who can contribute on the cheap. Jared Wiley, a late round tight end, great potential. And I'm telling you, this kid's going to be a player in the NFL. I just watch him play. You could just see it. You could just see in the way he plays. He's got to work on, uh, you know, the uh, sort of the wiggle after the catch. 
that's something you can definitely develop. But everything else, he's got the hands, he's got the size, he's got the demeanor, he's got the intangibles. This kid is going to be a player in the NFL. Yeah, that's um, uh, trying to review this uh, list here real quickly. Um, a lot of big school guys, except for uh, Solomon out of Troy. Uh, T- Wiley, an interesting thing about him is um, we got a few TCU guys on our roster now, right? Trey Tomlinson. Um, man, I, I, those two guys were on the same team at one time. I, I wonder what, how that matchup would look. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tom, uh, Trey, one of the shorter cornerbacks, I think, in the room. A uh, good list. Is there, um, so you're I, thinking all of these I guys. I got are... one honorable mention. I got one honorable mention. Teron Hopper from Missouri. Teron Hopper from Missouri. He was the player we had mentioned in our last mock draft. Yeah, you you selected him, didn't you, or did you? Yes, I did. Six foot two. 230, and I want to put him on there because the Missouri just ran their pro day. He ran a 4.63 in the 40, 7.25 in the three cone, 36 inch in the vertical, 10 foot four in the broad. Uh, he looks smooth. Everybody said he looks smooth in the position drills. Let me read off his honors and awards. Ready? Second team, all the SEC. Right there. I'm sold. Love it. Coaches vote. Coaches vote. 23 Buckus Award finalists, 23 Bronco Nagurski Award watch list, uh, 23 Senior Bowl watch list, uh, 55 tackles through 10 games for Mizzou. He led the Mizzou defense, created havoc on the field, uh, uh, recording six tackles for a loss, go along with three sacks, six quarterback hurries, three pass breakups. Unfortunately, he got hurt. Um, This kid just reminds me, of just like all those great, um, you know, like Nick Bolton, who played for the Chiefs, but just more athletic. I just, I love his athleticism. When I watch him play, he's always taking a straight line to the ball carrier. I just love it. And he's able to do it all. He can blitz. He can pa- uh, play in pass coverage. He hits like a ton of bricks. He loves to shoot gaps. I think he would bring a, just a dynamic element to this defense playing next to EJ 53. And, you know, the most important thing you shared there for me anyways, uh, I'm not sure which award it was you mentioned, but to get recognition from the SEC coaches yep. and Missouri is not, you know, they're not one of the marquee programs in the SEC by any stretch, but for the coaches to recognize him, uh, that's pretty impressive. Because they got a game plan against him, and they saw the havoc that he was yeah. able to sort of unleash on that on their uh, offense. So I think he's just going to be a, he's going to be a great ball player, and I, I'm really liking every player on this list because they bring that puka element. They are tough as nails. They are relentless. They're team first mentality, and they have that. They are gym rats. They're never going to leave the gym. Yeah, yeah. And what did Puka say? I think you shared this. You know, um, someone asked him, "How did how did they miss? How did they miss on you? All these teams?" And they said, "They uh, they they couldn't gauge my competitiveness. You know, they right. don't know how competitive I am." Exactly. He said yeah. that at the interview, and you know, and he's spot on. And these these guys know how to compete. They know how to win. They're all winners. Um, you know. Uh, the guard from Michigan that we just talked about. Look at that—that that vicious injury, gruesome injury, right? And he's ready. You know, that's that's all he's been focusing on. He wants to be ready for uh, the camp. Yeah, so, I'm going to have to put together a final list of your Puka Power picks, your day three dudes, and it's going to be really interesting to see how many of these fall to the Rams. Um, come on, baby! Be, yeah. Come on, need. Come this, on, is gonna, this is this is going to be the first draft uh, in quite a while where I'm super excited. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm always, it's always fun, but this is going to be a special one, I think. I agree. For, I for, agree. For Ram fans. The direction that the Rams go in this draft, I think, is so crucial for this season because I really do believe that they can make a really deep run. And I think they can I think they can win it all, you know, and the way their the way their team is currently set up, you know, we have we've we've read all the articles that sort of lopsided towards the offense, all the money that's on that side of the, uh, of the equation for the Rams. But think about it for this year, Mark, it's really, really important to draft. I'll tell you why. Number one, 
got to get some immediate uh, firepower for the defense, right? Without having to blow up your salary cap. And that the only way you're going to do that is bringing in these young players. Number two, they got to juice up the special teams. The yeah. special teams were an absolute liability last year. It cannot happen. So now with the rule change, hopefully the third phase will have some more, you know, if you want to say, uh, attention paid to it. And I think that's going to pay huge dividends for the Rams. And just a reliable <laughs> kicker. Period. Yeah. I mean, I still can't, I'm still scratching. I know you don't want to, you don't want to draft a kicker. I know. Yeah. But, <laughs> okay. but listen, I like the kid from Stanford. I really do. I like the kid yeah. from Stanford. I think he'd be a good, he'd be a quality pick. But um, one thing I will say is how do you overlook kicker in the modern day NFL? How do you overlook kicker? That was just on the Rams. That was just foolish. And the other part of it is building on the personality that they're trying to create for this team. And I think a lot of the youth that they brought on last year, and now they're going to sort of build upon that and bring those same type of players and bring them into the locker room, not just through the draft, but they're undrafted free agents. They're those street free agents that they signed. I think it's going to go and speak volumes in terms of when people look at who are the type of guys that we're bringing those dudes, like I said, those dudes that we're bringing in uh, to our locker room. Yeah. Are they those AD 99 types that are willing yeah. to give it all for the team? Yeah. The Rams have say what you want uh, about the Rams and about some of these rosters that may, may have teams that may have stronger rosters. I don't think any team, maybe there's a couple that can match the Rams as far as locker room culture and just the culture from the, from the coaches down to the players. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. I'm I'm really I'm really excited. I hope Ram Nation you are as well. I mean, it's been a long time coming. It's been two frustrating seasons, and um, watching AD ninety nine just walk away from the from the game. Uh, I I'm like Marshall Falk. I still believe he's coming back. I think there's there's definitely more to this story. It just seems too. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It just seems so hard to digest. It just doesn't make sense in a lot of different. Uh, yeah. Ways of yeah. I wish we could read his mind. If we could only read his mind. Or and you know, maybe it's something that Sean McVay and Les Need, maybe they know. That's right. Hey Sean, make sure you go on uh an early tear, a nice six oh start, so that AD starts uh, you know, getting the itch. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun year. Well, that's all I got for this one. Uh, you got anything else you want to add before we sign off here? Hey, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to a couple more mock drafts with my boy, Mark. Uh, definitely check out the roundtables. Uh, uh, great roundtables, great discussion weekly uh, through Rams Up. And Ram Nation, remember, double barrel Ram horns. Yeah, yeah there you go. Okay, Paul, thanks a lot for joining. And um uh, We'll get to another mock draft here real soon. Absolutely. Excited. Okay. Absolutely. Out here. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.